morning. It is day 18 of Vlogtober. I can see my breath. Yesterday it was 15 degrees. It was beautiful. This morning it is chilly. My fingers are feeling a little bit like ice. I have my polar fleece on, my jacket, and these are the only two coats that I brought with me. I'm wearing my chuck today and a long sleeve shirt underneath. I'm sure I will get much warmer during the day, but right now it is burr cold. This morning when we woke up, looked out the window at 7.30 and it was still dark out. And in Toronto, it was light, but we are getting near where the time will change. So with that time change at nighttime, it stays lighter, but in the morning it's darker. And then as soon as we cross over to the next time zone, it will get darker, lighter, but brighter earlier in the morning. So things are a changing. Today we are hoping to go to Kekebeka Falls and as we drive towards Winnipeg, we'll see whatever else is on the way. Hope that you have fun joining us today. Good morning. It is almost 20 after 9. This is the earliest start that we have had so far and it is a glorious sunny day. The trees look really quite beautiful. They are very yellow and hints of green here and there. It's possible we might see a deer as we are driving today. They do tend to come out more in the evenings and in the early mornings, but we may have missed them already. We are going to stop at Kekebeka Falls, which isn't too far away, and it's hard to believe that on Friday we were at Niagara Falls, and today we are going to be very, very far away from there at Kekebeka Falls. The drama has happened, but we have found the dog leash. It got put in the back, and we are now going to go for a walk to Kekebeka Falls. Nathaniel's still wearing his pajama bottoms because why not? Oh my goodness. The, I'm just, the, the boardwalk is, is sparkly with frost. You can see like it's wet. Oh my goodness, cold. Anyway, we're gonna to walk to Kekebeka Falls. We did purchase a valid park permit. Oh my gosh. I'm gonna to need to be very careful along this walkway because it is slippery. Wood when wet is very slippery. I think we're about to hit some stairs, so I don't think I will walk and do stairs at the same time. I can't even walk through Riverdale Park, so, you know, shouldn't risk it. And here is Kekebeka Falls. Nice smooth glass up top. Then, There are beautiful platforms through here. I think Scout is colder. Scout might be chilly too, she had her hair done. You can still hear the rolling falls in the background, but this river here is amazing. And you can see the mist coming off way down at the south end. The birds are up. It really is a beautiful morning. It's still just before 10 a.m but it is absolutely gorgeous. What do you think of Kekebeka Falls, little one? Interesting. Interesting, everything's interesting. Yes. 
It is so crisp this morning. It is just burr. I love the colors of autumn, but that chill, it just takes a bite out of your fingers. I do have some fingerless mitts on me and uh, I'm gonna have to open the my knitting container because that's where my purse is and pull out my fingerless knits because fingerless mitts. Not only is are my fingers cold, my mouth is also freezing. Anyway, it is a beautiful early morning walk, but we will be getting in the car shortly to continue our journey to Winnipeg. I hope you can hear me over the roar of the falls. Ontario Provincial Parks are wonderful places to visit. And as you can see, we have a great boardwalk here and uh, they take care to make sure that you know it's a safe place to be and that you can enjoy nature at its best. And we are going to head out now. My fingers are like icicles. We are back in the car trying to warm up. Thank goodness for seat heaters because Burr, it is chilly outside. It is one degree Celsius, Greg said. It's just, it's heated up because it was just zero a few minutes ago. We are continuing along the Trans-Canada Highway and the last animal sign I saw was a deer one, but we are now back in moose country. I am seeing a moose sign here. And of course, there's probably some deer around as well, but this is part we were told yesterday that we really need to be most careful. It was nice seeing the deer last night and while it would be really nice to see a moose on the side of the road we definitely do not want to see one in front of our car. That's a bit of a, a scary thing to happen. again today and the weather is cooperating really nicely for now except for that bit of chill in the air but we're nice and warm and cozy in the car now at some point I'm sure we'll have to stop and take our jackets off because we will be getting quite warm there are cars that come along here but the things that I've noticed most are lots of transport trucks driving along this highway bringing goods to the cities. It is still two degrees out right now. Greg says it's supposed to get up to 15. Maybe that was in Thunder Bay. We'll see what that looks like for us as we continue to drive west and northwest at that. We are just driving along and I'm taking in all of the changes in landscape lots of trucks driving in the opposite lane. We are on a two-lane highway, so you really hear those trucks when they go by. Poor Tasha is not having a happy day today. She's meowing in the back. But so far she's actually traveled quite well, as has Scout. Scout at least gets to stop and get out for little walks and little piddles because that's an important thing to do with a dog but um, Tasha just has her litter box in with her and um, we really have to keep her crated the entire day so it's a long day in there but um, today maybe we didn't give her enough calming medication. We just passed a sign that had a picture of a moose and a bear on it and it talked about the arctic watershed so Greg and I are thinking that from this point here that the streams now start flowing towards the Arctic. But again, what do we know? Um, but that's what the sign very, very briefly um, looked like it said. Anyway, we are just, we've got some bogs on the other side of these trees here. And I am doing a little bit of knitting. Not a lot getting done. I'm still working on colors two and three of the test knit, but at some point I will move on to the next colors and I'm looking forward to that color change. 
as we have been driving along the highway, one thing I've noticed is that we've been fairly close to the railway lines a lot of the way. And while we have been driving, we haven't seen many trains. Yesterday we saw one freight train and that's been it. I think a lot of the transportation now goes by transport truck rather than by freight train. It'll be interesting to see what that now looks like in the prairies, whether it is on trains or on automobiles. And again, we are having a bit of change in landscape. Here is the biggest change that we are about to face today, and that is that we are going to be changing time zones. And we are just about to switch over to Central Time. We just passed the sign that said Central Time. So where it was 10.44 a few moments ago, we are now at 9.44 a.m. Boy, have we gotten off to an early start. We have finally spotted a train. And not it's not moving, but well, it might be moving. But if it is, it's going very slow. But there is a train going alongside, so rail transport does still exist. As we were just driving along, Greg and I looked down at the road and then we looked at each other and there seemed to be a little chunk of something that um, looked like it may have been moose remains. But uh, yeah, it was kind of gross looking. It was just a little bit, so I don't know whether the, there's a truck that comes along and picks up moose carcasses or what. Um, I just want to point out, up on the rocks, People sometimes put those Inuk shooks. I'm not sure why they put them there, but um, I noticed quite a few as we drove from Toronto to Sudbury. There seems to be quite a few on the rocks that way. And then Sudbury to Sault Ste. Marie, not so many. And um, as we got closer to Thunder Bay, we saw them again, and I've seen a few today too. So they are just rocks that are stacked. And I'll have to remember to look up about Inukshuk so that I can tell you a little bit more about them tomorrow um, to see if there's any on these rocks here. But yeah, sometimes on the big tall rocks, it looks like there was one, but it got knocked over. But on the tall rocks, people built them at the top. Here are some more subtle shifts in landscape. The evergreens are taller, but there are lots of gaps also with boggy areas. So things continue to just change as we continue to drive towards Winnipeg. And we are now driving west. We had been driving northwest, but we've shifted a little bit. And again, more changing scenery. Lots to see when you're on a six day trip across the country, or at least from Toronto to Vancouver. The whole country would take days longer. I'm not so good at sleeping in the car, but this one is having a nice little power nap. We have just pulled off at a rest stop to take a little bit of a break for ourselves to let the dog out to get her a little bit walked, a little bit watered, to let the boy run free for a few minutes as well. and. Uh, just get some fresh air in our lungs. Where we started off the day at zero degrees, it is now 16 degrees Celsius, so it's really gone up in temperature, although it is still quite crisp. And um, I've lost the polar fleece and the rain jacket, but still need the chuck and the long sleeve shirt. So we are trying to acclimatize with the changing temperatures. 
These are special garbage containers to keep the bears away because of course we are in bear country and any type of garbage would attract bears or other animals. So you have to put your hand into the slot and there's a little lever in order to unlock it to open the garbage container. Very clever. I don't think that Toronto raccoons would take long in figuring this out. They figure out all of the garbage containers. Greg wanted to go for a run this morning, but because I wanted to get on the road and not run, I said it was a little bit self-indulgent for him to go running, so he's having a little bit of a, a walk and a stretch, and he was running a few moments ago. So they are enjoying a little bit of fresh air. I will be driving for a little bit when we get back in the car, and we will be driving towards Kenora, where we'll stop, get some gas, get some lunch, and uh, take another break. This pit stop has pit toilets. And I have to say there's one thing worse than pit toilets and that, ha that is having to squat at the side of the road. So sometimes this is the necessary evil. We are just in Dryden filling up the tank because we do not want to do the next bit of the leg without filling up. My eyes are actually feeling really quite sore. I was having a hard time knitting earlier. I'm still on colors two and three, but I think I'm gonna take my sunglasses off and try close my eyes for a little while and have a little bit of a nap. I did bring my pillow from home and I have a blanket, although it is now 18 degrees or it was um, a little bit ago. And oh, thank you, Nathaniel's passing me my pillow which I accidentally dropped in a puddle yesterday. But yeah, feeling a little tired. My eyes are sore, so I think I need to give them a rest from glasses and maybe just give them a little bit of shut eye. Oh, I'm good. I, I don't need your pillow too. Thank you though, hon. I wouldn't mind my blanket though. Do you have it there? Oh, it's stuck under everything. Oh, I like my blue blanket. I have favorites, you know. Anyway, going to get a little bit of rest. Greg's going to continue driving. I drove for a little bit and um, he's throwing all my stuff around. I better fix it up before we go. We are now just driving through a very agricultural area. Lots of cows and there's actually a wool and sheep farm coming up soon. So there's a wool and wool shop and a sheep farm. We probably won't be stopping, which is kind of sad because it would be really nice to stop, get some nice chunky wool for maybe knitting a hat or something for tomorrow morning when it gets really, really cold. But for now, I have just wound up a mini, which kind of matches the color of the trees around here. We are back in Moose Territory as we head from Dryden to Kenora. And it is a glorious day. It is now 20 degrees Celsius. It is beautiful outside. I just saw a few motorcyclists driving, and I guess they're trying to get in those last few days before winter sets in. I've got a little bit of a headache right now, so I just took a couple of a leave to help reduce the stress on my head. I think my eyes are still feeling a bit fatigued, but I'm really not very good at sleeping in the car, so I'm just doing some yarning of yarning of wind. Winding of yarn, and I've been enjoying actually winding the beehive yarns. They're really pretty. Anyway, there are more rocks, more trees, and out there somewhere wild animals. I have just finished winding Mini 13. I am really, really enjoying the Beehive Yarns advent from last year. And though they're not fully my colors when I was going and winding all the yellows and golds, I'm so impressed with how pretty they are. And I'm now transferring from 
gold to orange to red in this mini here and um, I know from opening it last year I really enjoyed the colors so I've been saving this one for this year's advent project so hopefully I will get that knitting mojo back because I'm having a rough time knitting right now and concentrating but um, maybe winding these minis will be a little bit of inspiration for me so it is two o'clock in the afternoon central time we're just approaching some rocks here and there are some Anukshuks built on some of those rocks people come along and pile rocks on top of each other to build an Anukshuk Many of the rock faces have them just piled on top. Some last longer than others. I just never know where they're going to be, so it's hard to try and capture them on the camera because I never know what's right around the corner. So that's kind of the exciting part of vlogging each day is um, exploring with you and sharing what I see when I see it. Sometimes I miss stuff, some, some, sometimes I don't. There's an Anukshuk up on that rock there. But um, that's what makes the adventure fun, isn't it? Not knowing what's around each corner. There's one right there, down there. And see if there's any on this rock face. I find that as we get closer to the city centers or the more urban centers, they're all quite um, remote that you see them more frequently. I guess people come and hang out on the rocks, watch the traffic go by, build in a nookshuk. luck sharing this part of what we're seeing with you. There might be some on these rocks here, but again, some may have fallen down. Where you see loose rocks, that's usually where somebody has come along and built. Now these rocks up here, you can see the moisture and uh, water coming down from above. A few little waterfalls. anyone who really enjoys geology and geography, a drive through Northern Ontario would probably make you very, very happy. There's an Anukshuk on the top of that rock up there. So, a nice place to visit for sure. Wait until you see this. Isn't it amazing? So I'm just going to wind this now. This is number 16, and I've just been slowly winding minis today, and that's been a nice way to watch the scenery, relax my eyes for a little bit, and anticipate the yarns to come in my test knit for Knitvent 2021. As we continue the drive, and get closer to Kenora, I am noticing that the birch trees here seem to have more leaves on the tree, so lots of yellow leaves in my view today. And it is looking really quite bright, colorful, and passing little lakes and lots and lots of rocks as we go by. We are not terribly far from the Manitoba bar border, so we just passed a sign not too long ago saying we were at, I think, kilometer 62, so we're somewhere in the 50s and um, getting closer and closer to that Manitoba border, which will then bring us closer to Winnipeg, which is our stop for the night. We are approaching the last two kilometers of Ontario and 
and up ahead on the left is the Ontario Welcome Center. The truck in front of us is going to pull in there and our plans are to pull into the Welcome Center on the other side of the border. So here is the Ontario Border Park and they've got a lovely little Welcome Center there and we are going to continue along the highway for a tiny little bit and we are hoping that the Welcome Center on the other side is open. It's hard to know with COVID but um, we are hoping that we will be able to stop, have a little bit of a break, let the dog out. It looks as though we are coming up on a provincial sign to our right welcoming, welcoming us to Manitoba. There's the Manitoba sign. There's the Manitoba sign. So, welcome, bienvenue to Manitoba, Canada. We are now in Manitoba. And we're going to go off to the right here because I am guessing that is a welcome center. Oh, it's closed. No, no, you want me to no. Go in the way? You can't. They put a. You can't. See, stop COVID variants. They've completely closed it off. There is the Welcome Manitoba Center. Not so welcoming, is it? Not so good. We have been in Manitoba for a few minutes. We did stop off at a local business and Nathaniel was able to go to the bathroom. We were also able to take Scout out. There was a little parkette across the street, so she got a little bit of a walk before we go on this last part of the journey to Winnipeg. Here is the scenery that we are seeing now and I have to tell you it is 24 degrees Celsius. When I took Scout for that little walk it was glorious. I am wearing my chuck today as you saw earlier. I probably don't need to be wearing it right now because it is so beautiful. Tomorrow morning though, we'll probably wake up and wish that we had hat and mitts again, but not a bad way to end a beautiful October 18th. I'm not sure if it's focusing or not, but I feel really bad for this poor ladybug who landed on our windshield when we were stopped. And we've now taken this poor ladybug miles and miles away from its home and it's also it's oh the poor thing the legs are moving still and um, it is just pressed right up against the windscreen poor thing whatever we do we have to make sure we don't run the wipers right now that would just be cruel one thing you may notice about the highway now that we've crossed into Manitoba is we are on a two-lane highway but it's a divided highway so our two lanes are going towards Winnipeg and somewhere on those other side of the trees there are two lanes going towards Ontario. Nathaniel is enjoying a snack that his aunt put together for us, veggie straws. It's been a long day and um, we were just talking about the fact that this is the first time Nathaniel has ever visited any other Canadian province. He is well traveled. He's been to England, he's been to France, he's been many places in the United States, but yeah this is the first time that he is leaving his Canadian province of Ontario to go to another Canadian province and over the next few days you will be visiting Manitoba, Saskatchewan, Alberta, and British Columbia. His brother Isaac, when he was young, did the tour the other way. So Isaac spent his summer in British Columbia. He flew there. But Isaac has been to Quebec, New Brunswick, Nova Scotia, and Prince Edward Island. And neither of my children have been to Newfoundland. I have been. Have you been to Newfoundland, Craig? Yes, a few. When did we go to Newfoundland together? I thought we drove up there. Newfoundland's the island, you can't drive there. 
No, I think we've just been to Prince Edward Island and then Nova Scotia. But um, I've been, but yeah, I think the three of you have not. We are just coming up to a deer sign, deer warnings. And one thing I've noticed about the difference between the Manitoba deer warnings and the Ontario deer warnings, these ones here, they look a little bit more athletic, while the Ontario ones look like they're maybe having a little bit more fun prancing across the highway. Here they look like they are athletically going to run across, so you better watch out. I'm thinking we are going to see a lot of flat land in the next little while. Actually, let's take a quick look on our right here. I'm not sure if these are cows or bison. No, these are cows. We passed a bison farm not too long ago, and I guess they raise bison for uh, game meat, bison burgers, things like that. We are now coming into Winnipeg, the heart of the continent. And the thing about being on the prairies is that you can see for miles and miles. So I've got some things in the way now, but a moment ago I could see the skyline, but these buildings are currently in the way. You can see it maybe a little bit through the gap over there, but I'm sure I'll see it in a moment and point it out to you. We are in Winnipeg and we have arrived just in time for rush hour. This building here looks like a Royal Fairmont Hotel with the beautiful roof. I could be completely wrong. Could be a provincial building as well. I just don't know. I'm not very familiar with it's Winnipeg. Hotel. is the Hotel Fort Gary. Anyway, this is Assiniboine Avenue and we are in Winnipeg. Here is the Union Station for Winnipeg, the train station, which would have seen many people go through it many years ago as they first traveled west. Still, of course, sees many people go through it today. We are at Broadway and this is downtown Winnipeg. We booked a hotel near the airport so that we wouldn't have to drive downtown Winnipeg but of course the sat nav has taken us downtown Winnipeg with construction going on and all the crazy but we'll figure it out. We have just pulled into our parking lot at the hotel we're staying in after a tour of Winnipeg and the first thing I see when we pull up are these electrical outlets. Now these are not for electric cars these are to plug in a block heater because it gets so cold in Winnipeg in the winter time that you have to plug your car in if you want it to start up the next day. So it is currently about 22 degrees now, so it is beautiful weather, but you never know what tomorrow will bring. So we may need to plug our car in. We are currently in our hotel room and Nathaniel has a special dinner of Denny's. And Greg and I are going to have a little bit of a date night and we are going to go to the hotel restaurant and enjoy a bit of quiet time. So Nathaniel is in charge of babysitting Tasha and Scout and guarding his supper. You looking forward to supper, hun? Yep. Yep. It is the end of the evening. Nathaniel had his supper in the room and looked after the cat and dog. He was a great babysitter and Greg and I went and had a lovely quiet meal at the hotel restaurant. <sighs> that was kind of nice just to have a little bit of a break and spend a bit of time together because it's been a whirlwind. Anyway, today we had, I think, a lovely drive. The weather was amazing. 25 degrees Celsius was the top temperature at one point. And even though we were inside most of it, it was so nice to see the sunshine. I am hoping I will see you tomorrow when we travel from Winnipeg to Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan. And I think there's a lot of footage today. I still have to edit. But um, I hope that you enjoy it, and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Bye.